Hi, welcome back to the Cozy Sound channel. My last loops and beeps track was called Chanson d'été, um, means Song of Summer. Um, what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to talk about how I put the track together, um, where, where the idea came from, and look at this track, obviously loops and beeps, I use cassette tape recordings and modular synth patches. So I'll talk a little bit about the tape recording, although there's been very little processing on that. But I'll show you kind of how I how I captured that. And then I will talk you through the way I set up the patch on the Project 12 modular analog synth to create the sounds that I used in the finished item. Um, did this step to one side. This is what the total patch looks like which um, for those not familiar with um, patching up modular synths it might <laughs> look a little bit scary um, but what I'm going to do I'm going to break it down and talk through each element uh, and how each sound is created within the track uh, and then kind of how it all comes together to form the overall sound so this is kind of a, uh, a making of video so this is the making of my latest loops and beeps track chanson d'été now if you've not already listened to the track um you've you've got two choices you can either leave this video now follow the link and go and listen to the track then come back and find out how it was done or you can see how i put it together and then go and hear the finished item in all its glory. Your choice. Either way, you know, it will work. Okay, uh, we'll start with having a look at uh, how I got the original recording in the first place, which was a summer thunderstorm here, common feature of UK summers. Um, but I took the opportunity to capture this one on my mobile phone, and that was where the idea for building a track out of this actually came from. So we'll go over to the computer and uh, have a look at how I processed that to create what became the cassette tape track against which I composed the modular music. As I said in the introduction, um, the re I recorded part of the storm classic UK summer thunderstorm on my mobile phone. So what I've done here, I've stripped the audio track out of the video recording. So this, this top blue track is is the raw audio. And I've loaded it into this. This software is called Audacity. It's a, a fairly simple audio processing program. It's open source and cross-platform. I'm, I'm using it on Linux, but I think you can use it on, you can get it on Windows and Mac and so, um, fairly simple, but it, 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 it does the job. It, it's, it's perfect what I want to do. So the, this top blue trace is the original audio. So it's picking up all, all the ambient sounds. We've, I recorded it. I was stood under a parasol on my patio. Um, it turns out the parasol leaks really badly, which is after 10 minutes, but myself and the phone were really wet through, so we, we gave him. But I'm going to move a bit further down. Um, let's pick something up. Sort of random, around about here. So what you're you hearing, you're hearing things being blown around. You're hearing the parasol itself flapping around. You can hear the rain pattering on the parasol, which which accentuates the the rhythm of the uh, rain and the storm. I quite like that. Um, so there's no processing going on here. This is this is straight what what was recorded. You got the wind, the rain, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just basically a field recording. Uh, I say field patio. And there's a thunder. Stop it there. So what I wanted to do was to take a portion of that that I could use as the basically backing track 
to a loops and beeps cassette tape and modular synth track. So this is the section that I clipped out. You, the great thing about putting it into a software like this is you can actually see the dynamics of the audio as, it, as, as the storm builds. So it's kind of setting off reasonably quiet and then builds more towards the end. Um, so it, it kind of gives you an indication of, of what, what you're actually getting. Uh, if I play what we've got here. Now, what you should have heard was the, the sound kind of came in. It didn't just suddenly start. So what I've done at the start, if you have a look, it's tapered. And I've also, that's because I've used fade in, an effect available in this software. And then at the end, it tapers out. I used an effect called fade out. Um, but that's it. There's no other processing that I've used at all on this. So that is the same audio in this track as what was in this track. All I've done is crop it, fade in, and fade out. So then I took this, this recording, saved it out as a FLAC file, free lossless audio codec, um, and recorded that onto cassette tape using my Sharp Hi-Fi cassette deck. This is the Sharp Hi-Fi cassette deck. Uh, it's an old machine, but it still works. This isn't a, a tape loop. This is a, a continuous field recording. Um, but the great thing about this Sharp deck is it has a tape counter on it, so I can actually tell roughly where I am within the overall length of the recording. So that was it. Um, what I could have done in in this software, you can multi-track and you can mix and, and crop and add effects and things. I didn't want to do that. When I do these loops and beeps tracks, and when I do the modular nights, so they're just the um, the synth itself. I try and perform it as though it were a live performance. So on this one, I take the cassette recording, I set the cassette player to play, and then I play the synth, and I'm responding to what I'm hearing as the tape plays and as the synth plays, and I'm trying to kind of respond to what they're doing and, and mix and match the music and the tape, and, and kind of it's a... It, it more of a conversation between myself and the machines to kind of, you know, they talk to me, I listen, I answer back, they tell me something else, and that the conversation goes on, and that's how I generate the track. So, what you actually see when I record this is uh, the video recording. The the visuals and the audio are taken directly from the video recording. Uh, there's no. I don't put it back in this software and process it. All that happens is it goes into video editing software and it gets, a bit similar to what I've done here, the video gets gets cropped with a fade in and fade out. Um, and then I mix in some maybe some additional visuals and uh, titles. But the audio is untouched. There's no post-processing. So what you actually hear is a live studio performance. So talking about you know, interacting with the synth, let's go and have a look at uh, what I did with that. Having got the ambient audio clip from the thunderstorm recording, what I wanted to do now was set up a patch on Project 12 that I didn't want to do uh, emulation of the natural sounds. Um, I wasn't kind of aiming for uh, sound design. What I wanted was to uh, create some some musical components that complemented the natural sounds, that sat alongside the natural sounds as a, a musical representation of the natural sound rather than using sound design to try and do an electronic emulation of the sound. The thing with the thunderstorm, it, it has a, a kind of a, 
a natural rhythm to it. So I wanted to start by setting up a rhythm. So I, I'm, I'm using um, the beat step controller to actually run a rhythm pattern. So it's kind of a 4-4 a rhythm pattern. So what I can do, I'll, I'll, I'll set it going and then I'll, I'll dial in the various bits and I'll, I'll show you where they come from. Ah, okay. Didn't mean to do that. That's a little taster of things to come. <laughs> okay, so this is the gate output from the beat step controller, which is going into the gate buffer on project 12 and then I'm taking the there's a couple of other outputs but for, for the drum section I'm taking one of the outputs from the gate buffer and putting it into the gate to trigger module which which takes the the gate signal and, and creates a trigger I, there's a video on that I'll put a link up somewhere um, so then I use the triggers to trigger both uh, clock dividers which then trigger drum modules and the triggers also as you'll see I, I use them on some, some envelopes. So we'll start with the hi-hat. The hi-hat module is down here. So that is taking the straight trigger signal which was the straight gate signal. It's not been through anything else, it's just taking a tr trigger signal into the trigger on the hi-hat. I've got the decay set so it's actually quite a, a tight decay and if I bring that up you can hear what that sounds like. So there we have uh, the hi-hat sound. Below the hi-hat, I have a snare module. Now, to trigger the snare module, I'm coming out of one of the trigger settings into a, it says it's a sub-octave generator. It also works as a clock divider. And I'm taking the divide by four to drive the snare. And again, I've got it set to a fairly tight. And then the output from the snare is going up to the two by four mixer and the snare. Comes in like this. The third drum module I'm going to be using is the kick drum and the trigger for the kick drum is coming out of the divide by two on the sub oscillator clock divider and then the output from the kick drum is just going straight up into the 2x4 mixer So we're starting to build up a, a nice little rhythm pattern going here. There's a final element to the uh, rhythm section, if you like, in that I also have what's called drumish, and this produces a nice kind of squelchy, modified snare type sounds. Um, so. What I'm doing here, I'm taking another trigger out from the gate trigger, but this time it's going into a, a 4017 clock divider. And then the output from the 4017 clock divider is triggering drumish. Then the output from drumish is going into the two by four, so I can now dial that one in. We get a nice wet, squelchy, almost syncopated punch. 
to a nice squelchy wetness. It fits in nicely with the kind of the, the squelchy storm, rain, wetness. Um, so that there's four elements to the drum pattern that I set up, and that's that's the four elements to the drum pattern. So we've got that running away quite nicely there now. The CV from beat step is coming out and going into um, a fairly new panel on Project 12, it's called Optivator. Um, I haven't actually done a build video on this yet, but basic, basically, without giving too much away, Optivator starts off with uh, a VCO that will provide a saw output and a pulse output and has CV control. The CV control is linear, it's not one volt per octave, so each step in the beat step controller is tuned by ear. You, you can't just kind of play the keys and, it, and it, it's in tune, you have to tune it by ear. Um, now, the saw output goes into a Vactrol, and the output from the Vactrol goes into the 2x4 and the Vactrol is triggered from the gate buffer which is taking the, the beat step gate in. So if you want to hear what that one sounds like, that one is going into here. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to invoke this idea of kind of rain falling. So with this nice kind of like bitter patter, bitter patter, bitter, that, that sort of idea going on there. Now, the second part of, it's kind of a two-stage thing, the, the Octivator, the second part actually is uh, a binary counter which, which provides suboptic divisions of the VCO signal. Now it's without anything connected in pulse, it takes the pulse signal without anything connected in pulse or the input to the activator, it's it's connected internally. So what I will get out of here is three suboptives which are square wave suboptives of the saw wave output. And again, they go into a Vactrol, out of the Vactrol, into the 2x4, so there's no extra uh, processing. And again, the Vactrol is triggered from the beat step sequence. So what does that one sound like? So now we're starting to build up the overall sound, so we've got a little bit more of a kind of a bass going on. Okay, talking of bass, I wanted uh, to fill the sound out a little bit with with a, a, a bass drone. So for the bass drone, I'm using one of the 4046 square wave oscillators in my dual VCO. The output from that is going into a voltage control filter and the output from the voltage control filter is going into this, this second mixer which is a buffered mixer that I've, I've got down here. The, sorry I, I just nudged a microphone, the CV for the VCF is coming from an envelope, which is a looping envelope, so it generates a repeating sweep. So I basically what I've got, I've got a drone that's got a, um, a swept filter on it. So what does that sound like? Again, it's, it's all linear, so it's tuned by ear. So it's, the idea here is to introduce something that's a little more ominous into the 
um, storm scenario. Now we're almost there, but, but what we need is, is something that's got kind of a, a bit more of a, a lead line, so that kind of that I can interject things in. Um, so I'm used for that. I'm going to use the key step controller. Now the clock on the key step controller is synced to the clock on the beat step controller um, via their MIDI connections, which is great because it, it means I can play around, I can use all the CV signals, but I can get the the two things nicely synced via a, a, a MIDI connection that really has nothing else to do with this analog system. It's it's, it's kind of a almost having a, a spare route that I can use, which is really, really useful. Um, so, I have CV coming out of the key step, and the CV from the key step is going into the 3340 VCO. Now, this is a one volt per octave VCO. And then taking the triangle wave output, which is going into a uh, low pass gate the output from the low pass gate is then going into an ms20 style voltage control filter and the output is going into my buffered mixer at the bottom here the cv from the voltage control filter is coming from an envelope generator up here and that envelope generator is being triggered by the last of the trigger outs on the gate to trigger. So essentially the, the, that's being triggered by the trigger version of the clock from the beat step. But because the beat step and key step are synced via their MIDI connections, it should all actually line up quite nicely. So what I can do I can play individual notes on the key step now and you'll hear what that particular patch sounds like. So nice again, it's that kind of drip, 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 drip rain kind of idea. Um, I'm probably going to step across the front of the camera in, in a moment. But the other thing that I can do with the key step now is I can play that sequence of notes that I've played there, but as an arpeggio. get even more kind of this this kind of squelchy um, wet rain kind of idea and just like in the the actual uh, ambient recording the real world recording um, you can you notice that sounds came in and went out so I can now throughout the piece I can start using the mixer controls to bring things in and out. And then, finally, um, I'm going to drop the camera down if I'm a little bit. So there we've got the beat step, the key step. Um, I've got a mixer over here. Um, that the outputs from the mixers on the Project 12 go into a, two of the channels on the mixer here. Um, and when I had the cassette player going, there was another two channels on the mixer that took the output from, from the cassette tape, so I could play the whole thing together. 
Um, but the cassette tape, I did once I set the cassette tape going, apart from monitoring the tape counter to know where I was within the, the track, I, I didn't touch it at all, I didn't do anything else. So I added just a little bit more kind of um, atmosphere and fill the sound out a little bit. What I have done on the mixer is I have a reverb pedal which is on the effect send and return loop and I have a small amount of that reverb dialed in on the two synth channels. So there you go, it, it looks like a lot of complicated wires all getting a bit crazy but once you start to break it down there is a relatively logical pattern to produce the sounds it does. <laughs> So there you go, that's the Project 12 patch that I used to provide the synth sounds on the um, Chanson d'Ete Loops and Beeps track. So if you did go and listen to the track, you now know how I put it together. If you didn't, you now know what all the little bits sounded like. So let's go, go away now. Play the track and listen to the finished item as a whole. Hope you enjoyed this. If so, give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't already subscribed, ring the bell. Thanks for watching.